Welcome everyone. We're going to learn um, learn a little bit, speak a little bit about uh, today, a special day. Um, we're going to uh, count yesterday. We count 32. So when we come to uh, the next number, uh, it's a very special day. It's the two things that uh, we're commemorating. First of all, the uh, the, the disciples, the pupils of uh, of Akiva, stopped uh, dying on this day. Twenty-two, um, twenty-four thousand students have died, and uh, during the time of Sfirah Saimo, but uh, today they stopped dying. So, of course, some uh, in some communities they are allowed to, at this point and on, they're allowed to take a haircut um, after the. Uh, after the 33rd day, they're allowed to take a haircut. And uh, also it's a, a day of celebration because of the, the passing of Abishim Baruch Hai, which he asked that that should be Yom Hilula, which is like uh, Hilula translate to a wedding. So he asked that it should be, um, it should be a day of celebration. We, uh, and he asked everyone to celebrate on this day. We know Hasidus tells us that the uh, deepest uh, uh, secrets of the Torah were given on this day. He said the most uh, the hidden secrets in general. Abishim Baruch is the one that taught the secrets of the Torah. We have uh, Moshe Rabbeinu gave the oral Torah, the written Torah, and the rabbis gave the oral Torah. But Abishim Baruch is the one that gave to the Jewish people the uh, esoteric part of Torah, Pnimi Satera. Started from him, we continued with the Arizal and other um, rabbis, Ramak, the Arizal, Baal Shem Tov. So it's a unique uh, day, very auspicious uh, time. We should all be uh, Vesimcha, we go and say Tachlan on this day. Some have the custom to eat carobs, of Shimbar used to eat carobs. On uh, used to eat carobs uh, during the whole time that he was in the cave for 12 years, and uh, we know that the, on Shabbos he had a miracle that was done to him that the carob tree was changed to a fig tree, and he ate on Shabbos he ate figs. During the week he ate uh, carobs. So some of the custom to eat carobs on this uh, on this uh, day today, uh, tonight, and tomorrow. So I'll go to the Tanya, Tanya chapter 48, the end of chapter 48. In today's lesson, uh, God's intimate knowledge of our earth is what powers its very existence. Yet, were that knowledge, which is one of His infinite being, to be internal, not circular or abstract, we could not survive the intensity in our finite state. Hence, it is indeed here, but in a concealed way. So the Alter Rebbe goes, um, <coughs> the Alter Rebbe now gives an example of God's thought and knowledge encompassing a specific object. The Moshal, for example, Kadu Aoritz Halazoi, Ridi Osis Bach Mekevet Kolivi, Kadu Aoritz Vachoshe Betecho, Vesech Techo, Atachtis, Akova Fam Amish. For example, in the case of the orb um, of the earth, his knowledge encompasses the entire diameter of the globe of the earth together with all that is in it and its deepest interior to its lowest depth all in actual reality for this knowledge constitutes the vitality of the whole spherical thickness of the earth and its creation ex nihilo the whole earth was originally created and continues to be created something from nothing ex nihilo as a result of God's knowledge of it. However, it would not have come into being as it is now um, as a finite and limited thing with an ex exceedingly minute degree of vitality sufficient for the, categ for the uh, categories of inorganic matter and vegetation. Imloi, 
על ידי צמצום רם ועצום, שצמצום מהר ואחד שנשלב איזה כדור הארץ, או את נעת for the, the world being created through the many powerful contractions which have condensed the light and vitality that is closed in the orb of the earth. לאחיו יסר ולקיימוי, ובכין הסגור ותכלס ובכין הזה וצמח ולבד, so as to animate it and sustain it in its finite and limited status and in the categories of inorganic and vegetable matter alone. The uh, minute degree of illumination which result from the contractions enable the earth to exist in a finite manner and only in the finitude of inorganic and vegetable matter. God's knowledge, however, as shall presently be explained, encircles the earth from above, for since his knowledge is finite, I'm um, sorry, his, his knowledge is infinite, while the world is finite, it is impossible for this knowledge to pervade the earth. Even though this knowledge constitutes the earth very um, creation and existence. But his knowledge is Musa. His knowledge, however, which is united with his essence and being, for he is the knowledge, the knower, and the known. So it has been previously explained in chapter 2 that God's knowledge and, and intellect are totally different from men's, from human beings. When a mortal being knows something, their distinct identities are involved. A. The knower, the person in possession of the knowledge. B. The knowledge, the intellectual faculty which enables him to know. And C. The known, the particular item of knowledge which he knows. God, however, is the knowledge, the knower and the known, is uh, he that knows and the vehicle through which he knows and that which he knows all, are all himself. His knowledge is wholly united, wholly identified with his essence. And knowing himself as it were, he knows all created beings not with a knowledge that is external to himself like the knowledge of a human being. Um, human knowledge requires getting to know something which is external to the knower, which is external to the knower himself. Not so when it comes to God's knowledge, it comes from his knowing himself, meaning that Hashem knows himself, therefore he knows everything else. So it's not like uh, it's adding more knowledge to its database by uh, Hashem having more knowledge of what's happening in your life because He knows Himself, therefore He knows you because we are all part of Him. <laughs> For all of the created beings are derived from His true reality. Uh, God's true reality and existence is the source of all created beings. By knowing Himself, therefore, as mentioned just above, He knows all of creation. Um, and this thing is not within the power of human beings to comprehend clearly and so on. Meaning the human mind cannot clearly grasp, cannot clearly grasp the concept of knowledge, knower and known, all being one and the same. For whatever matter a man may desire to comprehend, he imagines how it exists within himself, bearing in mind course that when the matter at hand is the knowledge of, God, of godliness it is to be conceived on a more exalted and abstract plane that, um, than that of, of simple human existence. Since God's manner of knowledge is totally dissimilar from men's, it is thus impossible for him to picture it at all. It must forever remain beyond his ken. As the Rabbam of blessed memory has written, that God is knowledge, knower, and known. And the scholars of Kabbalah have agreed with the Rambam, with his views, as it is stated in Pardes, Maramak, which is Rome Shikodovero, of blessed memory, this is also in accord with the Kabbalah of our master, Rabbi Yitzchak Luria, of blessed memory. It was Rabbi Yitzchak Luria, the Rizal, who first revealed the doctrine of Tzimtzumim, of contraction, which, which taught that God exalted essence 
is even more revealed from the Sephiroth than was uh, thought before then. It would thus be um, logical to assume that since uh, he stresses this infinite distance from the Sphiros, the Sphira of Chochma, for example, he would be unable to accept the statement that he is the knowledge. Nevertheless, that this teaching holds true even according to him, but with provisio. What, but with proviso. Thank you. In the mystery, i.e. the doctrine of contraction and the clothing of the light of the Sephiroth in the vessels of the Sephiroth, as has been explained previously in chapter 2. So the unity of God with the divine Sephiroth is so absolute that even according to Abitz Chakluria, one may safely say of this unity, He is the knowledge, the knower, and the known. Before the above note, the Alter Rebbe stated that God's knowledge is united with His essence and being, since his, uh, is infinite. Since He is infinite, His knowledge is infinite as well. It is therefore impossible for, his, not, for this knowledge to pervade the earth, and it most encompass it, and it must encompass it. This is true, of course, not only of God's knowledge of the earth, but of creation as a whole. Now this knowledge then, since it is of the infinite, of an infinite order, is not described as clothing itself in the orb of the earth. So this knowledge then, since it is of an infinite order, is is not described as clothing itself in the orb of the earth, which is finite and limited, while God's knowledge is limitless, but is encircling and encompassing it. Even though this knowledge embraces its entire thickness and interior in actual reality. Unlike the knowledge of human being, which encompasses only the image of an object and not its reality, God's knowledge embraces the object in an actual reality. Thereby giving it existence ex nihilo. Creation does not come about from the minute glimmer of godliness found within the object, which is only at the inanimate, inanimate uh, and vegetative level, but from the supernal knowledge that encompasses and encircles it. And although this knowledge is responsible for the object's existence, it is still described as encompassing. So although it is responsible for its existence, it's still described as encompassing. For inasmuch as the knowledge uh, is infinite, while the created being is finite, this knowledge is unable to close itself within the created being, because the created being is finite. Commission is well, Mokimach has explained elsewhere that creation ex nihilo can take place only as a result of the encompassing light. So we all are really here because of the encompassing light, because of Savior. So the takeaway from today's Tanya, God in, um, encompassing energy is the very energy of each and every element of creation. All God's need, all God needs to do is know himself and he thus knows what is taking place in this world he just have to know himself the famous example is like if if god forbid you have uh, something that is um painful in your body you know it right away you don't it's not added knowledge to you it's part of you therefore you know it um immediately you know the same thing with god since entire creation is part of god everything is known to him and it's it doesn't have to have extra effort in order to know something um, so uh, this is it for today um, I'm not going to be making another video for Yaakov and the like because of not in the office today we have to celebrate uh, we have to celebrate the day special day uh, I'm not saying the the name because we shouldn't say the name now it shouldn't be like we're counting the Oma it's a special day today um, just uh, mention a short uh, anecdote of Abishim Baruchai since it's his day 
should mention uh, that uh, Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai, uh, first of all, as I mentioned before, he was 12 years in the cave under very harsh uh, conditions. He didn't even have uh, clothing, and he had one set of clothing that he kept for Shabbos. Though during the week, he would cover himself with sand so he can uh, he can learn and and daven and keep his his clothing for Shabbos, and. Uh, he went through a very hard time. He ate the whole week. He only ate carbs. And we said before that on Shabbos, a miracle happened and the tree changed to a fig tree. Shabbos, he had figs. Um, and so that's why, that's where the custom is to try to eat carbs. I don't know if we can find them in the store, but uh, it's a custom to eat carbs on uh, on this day. And uh, today and tomorrow. And uh, also when uh, Shem Baruch Hai passed away, he was buried in a cave. Uh, years later, when his son passed away, about to wanted to bury him in the same cave with his father, so uh, there was a snake. The Gemara tells us there was a snake at the opening of the cave that did not allow them in. Till they said to they said, "Let uh, son be buried with his father." And he was allowed in, and uh, a few uh, uh, a few years later, when the grandson uh, passed away, they, he wanted to be buried also with his. Uh, they tried to bury him also. At that time. And access was not granted um, and there was a heavenly voice that said it's not that he was less than a tzaddik he just didn't go through uh, the pain that uh, Abishim Baruch Hai and his son w went through in the cave so uh, we sometimes see that uh, the, because of, because of uh, different challenges that people go through it actually brings them to a higher level. Obviously, the Rebbe said that this generation, everything, everything should be bechesed of rachmi, with kindness and mercy, and betu vaniri vanigla, there should be simcha, there should be joy, in a very uh, revealed way. Betu vaniri vanigla, not uh, camouflaged uh, joy, and not uh, pain that lead to uh, joy, rather it should be straight joy, and uh, straight, uh, straight uh, simcha without any kind of challenges so buchim to you all have a, a great uh, day a great celebration and uh, we'll see you god willing tomorrow